thanks so much for joining us today on Feeling Good, sponsored by Warren County Community Services. I'm your host, Shelley Abrams, and you definitely can see that we are not in the um, studio today. We are here at the Metro Park uh, here in Westchester, which is adjacent to the VOA Museum area which you might be familiar with here on Tylersville Road. And even more specifically, we are here on the site of the future USS Cincinnati Submarine Memorial and Peace Pavilion. And today we are going to talk about some, um, well, just some points about why is, is it located here? What are we doing with the memorial? Where did the parts from the submarine memorial come from? And to answer those questions, I have Bob Viney to my right and Gary Johnson to Bob's right, both of whom have been working on the USS Cincinnati submarine memorial for, um, well, I know Bob's been working on this for a few years and Gary has <laughs> been, and Gary has been working with Bob and the committee the last few months. So thanks guys for um, joining me today on this beautiful, beautiful sunny summer day. Um, and uh, we actually do have some digging, moving of dirt going on in the background. So if you hear that, it's because we have broken ground. We have, we? yes. We are, we are underway on diesel power. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, let's start by telling our audience a little bit about both of you. Um, your background uh, with regard to submarines in general, and more specifically, how did you get involved with the USS Cincinnati Submarine Memorial? Bob, why don't you go first? Well, I, uh, after graduating from Naval Academy, I served on a fast attack nuclear submarine that was a precursor to the USS Cincinnati class. Um, Interestingly for me, I served on the SSN 639, and now I'm working to build a memorial for SSN 693. So just a, just a, a nice quirky coincidence. There you go. But uh, after a business career and teaching career, uh, winding up in Cincinnati, I uh, was running a business coaching practice and I was in a business networking group that met once a week, and a gentleman named Joe Jap happened to be a member of that group. Uh, he had already been working on this for 10 years, um, but he was a, a student at nuclear power school the same era in the same school where I was an instructor. So we kind of- Small world. Yes, we kind of connected. Right. And he mentioned uh, the project. And uh, he was basically a one-man show at that time. And uh, so I joined him, and we've been working on this for about 12 years. Uh, look, we spent about nine to 10 years looking for a site on the banks. Uh, we received uh, pieces of the nuclear submarine USS Cincinnati from the Navy um, about 10 years ago. And they have been in storage in Byers Steel in downtown, near downtown Cincinnati mm -hmm. ever since. Mm -hmm. And uh, we weren't able to get the uh, parks committees and the county and the city to agree to give us a site uh, with everything, all the other priorities they had for the banks. So we started looking for an alternative and uh, we, you wound up introducing us to Jack Dominic here at VOA, and the rest is history. Uh, everybody up here in Butler County and Westchester Township, the Metro Parks, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, Westchester Liberty Chamber of Commerce, they've all been so uh, supportive of this project, we, we, including Jack Dominic, who calls us his neighbor. Um, but uh, yes, we're, we're 
really excited that it's underway and there, there are people that have been working on this for 20 years that can't believe their eyes. Well, the thing of it is, and, and you mentioned uh, the fact that in meeting Jack, Dominic, that was kind of the um, initial connection you needed to get. Plan B going. Very, very, uh, uh, very interesting um, collaborations happening one after the other, and it just seemed like it was right place, right time. Tell people um, a little bit, well, before we talk about the museum and the connection with the era of the submarine and what the museum uh, has in store for visitors, Gary, tell us a little bit about um, your connection with submarines. Well, I was a, an Ohio State engineering graduate, the Ohio State University, of course, okay. and uh, graduated and uh, was in ROTC, served on a missile submarine, the USS Simon Bolivar, uh, SSN 641, just a couple numbers different than what he <laughs> said. Right. For you guys watching, they, every hull of a submarine is, is numbered from number one, and we're up to 700 or 800 by now that have ever been ordered. So uh, I was in the Navy for five years. I, I left the Navy, went for Procter & Gamble, worked in a variety of technical roles. And the, the thing that I think is really funny is that we're 600 miles from the ocean here and there's a full-size submarine <laughs> going to be built here. Yes. So that, that was kind of, I never thought that would happen in my lifetime to have, you know, I kind of dreamed about, oh, it might be nice to be a docent at a submarine memorial and now to have one that's more than just a sail sticking up it'll be a lot of excitement. And the thing about submarines, I was in the college fraternity and my experience on submarine is that it's much like a fraternity because mm -hmm. everybody's watching for everybody else. There's always a turnover, you gotta train everybody. So there's always a school of the boat, we used to call it, of learning how do you keep this place safe so we all get back. And so that carries forward and, and you want to train people. And I, I did that for my consulting and my time at P&G. So mm -hmm. it's always been something I've liked. And now you look at it, here we are, we're old guys. <laughs> Some of us have hair and, and, and we've got, um, you know, there's a need to train the next generation in <laughs> the science, technology, engineering and math kind of topics that are needed to build complex things like a submarine, design them, maintain them. And that doesn't mean just college graduates. It means people who are tradespeople too. Right, we, right. Where there's a lot of contracts here in Cincinnati making parts for submarines and they can't find people to do it. Well, and interestingly, um, you know, I'm, I'm very involved with Miami University ILR mm -hmm. over at the VOA Learning Center, which is in this same neck of the woods. And all of a sudden, what was it, maybe two years ago, I meet Gary as a presenter for, for submarines. And I thought, oh my gosh, he needs to meet Bob because <laughs> they're two submariners. So I, I mentioned Gary to Bob and they connected and then they found out they were at P&G and there were, there were many um, initial connections that you never really knew before, right? Yeah, chances are if you're a former submariner or even a Navy person, uh, and you're in Cincinnati, it's either GE or PG. <laughs> Probably hired you. Yeah. Right, right. Well, interestingly enough, you mentioned that um, the Navy League here in Cincinnati has been very involved, correct? Correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're and, a big sponsor of yes. this program. And there is actually a submarine veterans group here in Cincinnati as well, correct? There is, yes. We love them. They have a the sense, uh, Submarine Veterans is a national organization, mm -hmm. but we do have a base here in, uh, in Cincinnati. Uh, they have a replica of the USS Cincinnati submarine on a trailer that they take to July 4th parades, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, opening day, parade opening day parades yes. for the Reds. And in fact, they are at a, f a city festival today out on the west side. Really? So they that's why they couldn't be here. Well, and they were also here on July 4th at the VOA Museum. Mm -hmm. They were here for all Country three. Music Festival. Well, and the Country Music Festival yep. as well. They are so dedicated to um, 
to submarines and wanting people to know about just the whole culture yep. of working on a submarine. And like you said, learning more about the training. <laughs> You're, they're, they're very, um, what I want to say, they're very passionate about wanting the next generation to grab hold of some of these skills and and the next generation probably doesn't even know that those those skills are needed or, or what it takes to get them right right what that's what we hope the educational program that's part of this whole plan right will be very important in that but it's not just science technology engineering and math related to the submarine because for example one of the things that we will teach in our education center is the electrolysis of water to make hydrogen and oxygen. Mm -hmm. We use that on a submarine and we keep the oxygen and pump the, pump the hydrogen overboard. But uh, the, the people, the kids that come and learn that technology may in 20 years find out they're working in a company that's making hydrogen refueling stations mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Um, and that knowledge is going to come right in handy. Very good. Well, here we are actually standing in um, the midst of a, of a lot of green space. <laughs> and we found out, didn't we, um, that national parks are involved. Uh, Butler County metro parks are involved. Uh, township. Uh, you know, officials are involved. There's, there are many different... Uh, what shall I say? There's Oops. about eight organizations yes. uh, involved in this collaboration. Yes. This is not something we could do by ourselves. Yes. And um, as you say, without Butler County Commissioners, uh, Westchester Township mm -hmm. Trustees, the, the Westchester Township Administrators, um, uh, uh, but Butler County Metro Parks uh, Director and her staff, um, the Westchester Liberty Chamber of Commerce, the Northern Cincinnati Foundation, where all our funds uh, and donations are kept. Right. Um, the Cincinnati Subvets, the Navy League, uh, everybody is associated in trying to bring this to the community as a as a civic icon, as an educational resource that would be unique in the country. Well, now, since we see all this green space, I know that you brought some colorful diagrams. Maybe you could reach for a couple of those diagrams and our audience can kind of picture this, if you will, if you can envision what this is supposed to look like in about a year. A year. So a year from now, hopefully, we will be out here again and we will be showing you this. Right now, we're standing roughly here, so you're looking at something that's pointed that way. Just to get turned. If, if, but it, turn it, if you can see the pond in the background. Over here. This is the retention pond that we will be along, kind of paralleling the telephone lines, which will be coming down in the next couple of weeks. Um, they're going, there's going to be a wharf area that, that sticks out into the pond about where that land is that juts out a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and then the full-size replica of the Cincinnati, 360 feet long, uh, will be under a canopy of solar panels. And those panels will, will uh, replicate the part of the submarine that you would see if it was on the surface. So the part shown in the diagram that's open through these uh, hull rings, that's the part that would be underwater when, when the okay. ship is at sea. This big red box here is one of, the, one of the pieces of equipment we got from the USS Cincinnati. And this is the emergency diesel generator backup power supply. It provides power to the ship particularly the cooling uh, system for the core, if the nuclear reactor shuts down while we're at sea, um, until we can re repair it and bring it back online. Normally, this would be painted navy gray. But because this was the USS Cincinnati, 
and it was built in 1975 through 1977 when the Cincinnati Reds were winning back-to-back -back World Series. They painted it red in the shipyard and it is forever called the Big Red Machine. There you go. So if anybody ever wants to know, is there actually a Big Red Machine? There it is. They'll be able to see it. Now the other parts we have, this area here is called the Conning Tower and the forward uh, control planes called the Fairwater planes are mounted on top of it. And we have the upper rudder, which by itself stands will stand 17 feet tall when you come to see it next summer. And underneath the screw of the real ship, there's another 17 feet that goes underwater. So there's there's 34 feet of rudder to control this the uh, direction of the ship. And that conning tower will be about how tall? Well, let's see. The, till the top of the hull rings will be 14 feet. You add another couple of feet for the the uh, sol solar panels, and this is about 20 feet. So it'll be about 34, 36 feet in the air, which is about the same height as the top of the tower at the VOA Museum. So people should definitely be able to see it from the roadway. You won't be able to miss it as you drive by on Tylersville. Because you're planning on having it lit at, yes, at night be lit as well? Yes, it'll be lit at night, right? Okay. And if this was an actual submarine, we would need 35 to 40 feet of water for it to float. Ah. It takes a lot of water. There's not enough water in the Ohio River to float um, a submarine like this. Okay. So uh, okay. that's why we had to bring it up in part. Does this show, this doesn't show the training center, does it? Uh, right here. Oh. Yeah. So this little building here, which is going to be right over there at the end of this uh, staging area, looks like a parking lot. Right over there will be our education center where, where we will occasionally have classes in buoyancy. We're gonna have a big buoyancy tank in there. We're gonna have remote controlled submersible vehicles that kids can build and operate in the tank. As I said, we're gonna have a, uh, a plexiglass model uh, a tabletop model of an electrolyzer to teach the science of breaking water into mm -hmm. hydrogen and oxygen mm -hmm. um, and uh, several other uh, items we, that we'll come uh, up uh, with. I'm and sure. we're hopeful <laughs> that people who are watching this may have ideas of other things that they think might be of use that would help teach principles that make a submarine work. Well, I would guess that you two are planning on being docents, right? Oh, All sure. Oh, sure. For that training. And the subvets are chomping at the bit to, to be, and see, the, so with the subvets, we can station people who have worked in the engine room their whole career. We can station them here and they can talk about all the engine room equipment. About here is where the reactor, uh, the reactor compartment would be. So we have people who are reactor operators. They'll be able to talk about the reactor department. Then you have the control room will be around this area. Uh, atmosphere control would be in this area. And then over here would be where we would uh, drive the ship, con the ship, uh, sonar, radio, uh, electronic material, which is basically being able to check who's got radar on us or whatever, our own radar system. And then in the bow over here, which we won't have a replica of, is the sonar sphere, which okay. is about a 12-foot diameter oh, sphere that is covered in hydrophones. And um, it listens in all directions when the ship is at sea. Okay. And that's what gives us, that's our principal point of advantage, along with the sound quieting that, that goes in the construction of the submarine. So, one, th uh, one thing that we're not going to try to do here is show people the way you normally got on a submarine because yeah. be, there'd be a hatch here behind the sail and you go down a ladder. And women don't wear skirts when you <laughs> climb on board a submarine because there's a draft going up. So we're not going to do that because that's a safety hazard. Well, but other I, than that. I do have to say that I did go on the tour uh, and in Groton, Connecticut, of the, oh, well, Nautilus, the Nautilus. That, that's different. Yeah. And yeah, although I, when I ducked under 
to get into the hatch, I, I asked You were going Bob, between compartments yeah, through the watertight door. I, and I asked Bob, I said, so does this get any smaller <laughs> as you get Oh, in there's there? places there are. Because I might be turning around <laughs> and just watching you go through. He said, no, it, it opens up when the, you the, get inside. That Nautilus exhibit is pretty wide open. But yeah. I have to say, for you two to have lived on a submarine for months at a time, right? Yeah. What was your longest 60 some 67 days? 67 days underwater without changing air with the atmosphere. We made our own air to breathe for 67 days. And Gary, how about you? About the same, about, yeah. about 10 weeks. I was on a missile sub. We had regular patrols. They lasted about 10 weeks. Okay. So 70 days. Okay. And you'd wonder, you know, you'd be, I was officer of the deck looking through the periscope when we come up to listen to a satellite and people would want to come up and look through the periscope to see, is there still a world out there? Yeah, <laughs> you know? I'm sure. We're in a spaceship, aren't I'm, we? I'm sure. I mean, just hearing you talk about it, I'm starting to hold my breath. You know? <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh my gosh, do you have other, I know you have other graphics. Anything else that you want to show us? Sure, I'll show you from a different point. Okay. Gary, I know with ILR, um, you talk, as I remember, you talk about many different oh, submarines yeah. throughout history. Oh, and, yeah. and mention maybe, you just mentioned the keeping things silent. It, it is known as a silent service, correct? Oh, yeah. Could you, could well, you elaborate uh, on that? For a couple reasons. One, if you, if you don't have, it's not like the old sea view in the TV series with <laughs> windows to see what's going on. You can't see very far underwater. Mm -hmm. You listen underwater. So one part of being the silent service is it's very quiet. You don't want to give away your position. But the other part of the silent is keep your lips buttoned because you could reveal secrets. Because a lot of what subs do is top secret. Right. When they're out there, their position's top secret. Whatever operation they're on, it's top secret. I was on a missile submarine. They only knew generally what part of the ocean we were in. They didn't know the exact position because that would that would be a, a security risk for somebody back in Washington to leak, perhaps. You know, so that's why it's a silent service both ways. So it's hard to, to keep that in mind. Yes. Well, the, the I, only time that people really knew where we were because we didn't have missiles and we didn't have a fixed operating area uh -huh. was, uh, for example, if we were transiting into Hong Kong for a break during a six month deployment, the government wants to know where is that reactor? Ah. They want to know where it is as soon as it enters their territorial waters. Okay. They want to know where it is and you have a track that you have to meet and if you deviate from it, it becomes a political issue. Well, I know, <laughs> I know specifically that along with the USS Cincinnati Submarine Memorial, there's also the Peace Pavilion side of it as well. And wouldn't, wouldn't you say that you are peacekeepers? Well, that's the whole purpose for this machine. It's, it's not built as a weapon of war to go attack other countries and dominate their land and take their natural resources. It's designed to keep global peace and security and to keep the U.S. specifically peaceful and secure. Right. So that's right. that's why we said it's a it's a memorial and a peace pavilion because this is how we have kept our country safe and and basically kept most of the globe peaceful since the end of World War II. And, and T Teddy Roosevelt said it well. Speak softly and carry a big stick. This is one of the big sticks the U.S. has, okay. you know, well, to be makes, able to keep the peace. Makes perfect, now, perfect now sense. Now, this view comes more from the stern, which would be right over here. You can see the rudder, mm -hmm. and it shows a very big view of the training center, the right. educational center. Right. So, um, right behind the camera is the, the grove of trees that's at the edge of the parking lot, which is right. kind of where that area behind us is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, it's if you could see it on these diagrams, but uh, the, on the pavement, we will have in dark uh, brick the 
all full outline of the hull. Okay. So really this is replicating the the outside of the, the hull that you would see on the surface or submerged. Mm -hmm. But submerged, you, there would be all of this part of the ship and going around to the screw and the and the stern planes, which you you won't see here, but will be replicated in dark um, pavers on the on the floor of the memorial. Uh, another point to make is that this kind of submarine had three separate decks below the hull, right? And so what you would walk on would be the upper of those decks. The other decks are a little smaller, but they're they're all the middle deck is the widest because you're it's the widest part of the submarine. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a lot more space, and we'll have diagrams to explain what's down there, but we're not digging down to show you. Right. <laughs> well, and, and that brings up the, my next question. Um, I mentioned about volunteers being posted to explain uh, about different parts of the submarine, et cetera. But uh, at some point, you will have like displays, right? Well, uh, we'll probably have some fixed displays, as Gary was talking about, mm -hmm. so people can tell where they are mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning. Right. But we'll need to raise more than a million dollars to go to the next step, which is to become interactive. Uh -huh. So we want to take all the information that will be static in the beginning, and we want to animate, instead of showing a picture of what a nuclear reactor looks like with operating and shut down, we want to be able to animate the process of starting up a reactor from shutdown to operating and back again mm -hmm. and narrate it. So to do the animated graphics, narration, and then all the equipment that we need to display it on kiosks around the site so that kids can go up and say, I want to know how a reactor operates or I want to know how it goes up and down. Right. Um, that's going to be probably two years from now. Okay. And, uh, and we have a major fundraising goal that we have to hit before we'll be able to develop that. Well, you, you, and you mentioned funds. Um, you had uh, an anonymous donor um, contribute so that you could even get started. Correct. correct? Yes. He contributed probably 80% uh, uh, of the... Um, of the funds that we'll need to build the entire site. Um, and then on top of that, we have committed to the uh, officials that we will have a, an endowment of uh, probably around three quarters of a million dollars, maybe a million dollars, that will fund ongoing operations, maintenance, repairs to the site so that there is no public money involved in building it, there's no public money involved in operating or maintaining it. Um, it's, if you will, it's a gift from the veteran community to the community where we call home. Well, and I thought that for our program, Feeling Good, I thought our audience would be very interested in seeing what veterans are doing. Uh, even now to remain active in their community. And uh, even though we are technically in Butler County, Butler Warren Road is right over here. So Warren County, we can see the WLW Tower in Mason from here. And that is actually one reason why uh, the VOA um, set up what their 11 antennas here and broadcast around the world during the, 40s the Cold and 50s, War, right? right? Yep. Powell Crosley helped them do it. Yes. Uh, Powell Crosley helped build it, and there's a there's wonderful exhibit inside the museum to talk about that part of the history. This museum is a must-see destination. Uh, I know they've just done some uh, rework of the interior, and I think they're opening back up again in, in October. In yeah. October, but I actually have taken a couple tours. I've taken people inside, and they cannot believe um, it, the displays of all the radios that were made. 
uh, all the transmission around the world during the Cold War. And then, as you mentioned, Gary, so many of the Crosley inventions. Oh, yeah. Are no, featured in there, including the Crosley some, Museum. Some autos, yeah, yeah, some did autos, a appliances. And there um, was a USS Cincinnati in the exhibit. Yes. The, the US Cincinnati, which was a surface ship uh -huh. at the time of the Titanic, picked up its emergency radio signals. Oh. They weren't able to get over to it in time. Oh. So, a, a small role in the past. Uh, and and uh, although we're standing, as you said, uh, officially in Butler County, or a couple hundred yards from the border with Warren County, um, that uh, in developing our educational program, right. it's not being developed just for one county. We have Lakota, uh, the Lakota School District, we have the Mason School District in Warren County, and we have the Indian Hill District in Hamilton County, all working together to help us take our technical content and be able to present it to kids in grade relevant ways. So as I told the, the teachers and the superintendents, I know how I could teach the technology to you. I don't know how to teach it to a fourth grader and how that's different to an eighth grader or a twelfth grader. Right. That's what they're expert in. Right, right. So the three school districts are are excited about working with us to help develop that interactive camp uh, uh, educational part which will enable kids to enter the grade they're in and then get a series of questions and animated video responses to the science, technology, engineering, and math questions they have. So it's not like you can only, you're only gonna be taught what we wanna teach you. Uh, no, you're gonna be able to choose the, what you're interested in knowing about and find out about it. And, and we hope that this will spark an interest in those young people, boys and girls, right. young women, young men, and saying, oh, I might want to do that for a living. Right. Whether it's go to college and study engineering or go take a trade of, I'd like to do hands-on. I want to be a mechanic. I want or to work on diesel engines or a welder <laughs> yeah, yeah. or a machinist. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's big shortages of those kind of jobs right now. Well, I know when you had the, in July, when you had the groundbreaking over here, Miami University uh, ROTC was well represented. Yep, was and the commanding officer and the... Uh, and, assistant uh, commanding very, officer was here. They are very interested as yep. well, in, again, in collaborating. And Butler Tech, yes, uh, yes. Uh, Superintendent John Graft and his staff right. have been very uh, interested in being part of the educational program right. as well. Right. So um, this is what you see today, and this is September of 2024. So we're hoping that. I August would say, by, of 2025, what, July. July or August. We want to get. We want to have it finished before the next country music festival. Right. Um, but uh, yes, and, and uh, on the site here, probably by December, early December, depending on the weather, um, we'll have the basic plaza in. We'll have the whole rings in. And we'll have the sail mounted. Sail the rudder yeah, mounted. That's a bunch of tons of steel, so it needs good support, and they've engineered for that. Yeah. So um, I bet that many people that have worked on these committees with you have learned an awful lot more about submarines than they ever knew that they <laughs> would, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, so. For our audience, uh, if they have questions, if they would like to donate, um, what uh, is the contact information? Well, we actually have a website, believe it or not. Um, and the website is subcincy.org, S-U-B-C-I-N-C-Y dot org backslash donate. And there's a, if you're donating less than $1,000, there's an automatic uh, way you can donate online okay. um, via credit card, etc. cetera. Um, donations greater than 1,000, which we've had several, uh, we, we handle directly. Uh, so it would be a contact, they would leave their contact information and we would follow up with them. But 
we've, as I say, we have our anonymous donor who's who's given us uh, multi millions of dollars. We've had uh, some other uh, veterans that have donated a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. So we've had some large donors. Uh, we're hoping with some of the Fortune 500 companies that are here in Cincinnati, a lot of them uh, depend on uh, a highly educated resident mm -hmm. base, mm -hmm. a student base here in Cincinnati to be their former, their future employees right. that they might be interested in putting their name on the education center right. or sponsoring an interactive kiosk um, or, or sponsoring the landscaping project. There are, there's about 12, 12 or 14 different opportunities okay. uh, from a donation of 25,000 up to 500,000 of, of various elements of the design that people can, can be identified with as the donor. And everybody who donates will be on our donor website page forever. And you are, you know, we usually um, wrap up our show um, talking about future events. And I just thought I would mention you both are available for public speaking to rotary groups, to civic groups, to church groups, to any type of I, I spoke to the Hamilton Rotary last week. Right. I'm speaking to the uh, Hornet Breakfast Group the first, 4th of October. In Monroe? Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, it's in... Um, Oh, Cloverleaf Country Club. Oh, oh, I said that. I said Monroe because they're the Hornets, <laughs> but there are other Hornets, other yeah, places. Yeah. So. Well, the aircraft carrier Hornets. Oh, uh, okay. oh okay. And then, um, as you probably know, I'm teaching a submarine course yes. for Miami ILR in October. In October, you will be right over here at the VOA Learning Center, Miami University. So. And, I'm, and I'm doing a one session day yes. just to give the community an update on what we've talked about today. What's right. gonna to be at the at the memorial and uh, the education program details and what they can do to help. Right. Well, thank you both so much for spending this time out here on the, uh, the Great Green Way. <laughs> and uh, can't wait until we come back and we start seeing uh, the progress. Uh, well, that's one of the fun parts of doing engineering work is something that's an idea in your head becomes a drawing and then it becomes a physical reality right and that's a real satisfaction in, in doing that kind of work right exactly yeah. and if any of you in our audience have any inkling that you might want to get involved either through donating volunteering and i i didn't really know that much about submarines but i've i've become much more involved in knowing more about them that i probably will volunteer to be a docent and guide students over to Bob or to <laughs> Gary and say, they can answer your questions. My dad was in the Navy, but he was not on a submarine. He would be getting such a charge out of the fact that his daughter <laughs> is this involved with the Navy and with submarines. So on that note, uh, we hope that you're feeling good and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.